Orbits in Kerbal Space Program follow the same laws as orbits around the Earth and Sun. This video examines the first law of planetary motion and how it can be used to understand what it takes to reach an orbit around Kerbin, home planet to the Kerbals. Simply stated, an orbit is an ellipse with a center of mass at one of the foci. An ellipse can be drawn by placing two pins into a board. A piece of string is tied into a single loop and placed around the pins. Trace the shape with a pen pulled taut against the string. This shape is an ellipse and each of the pins is a focus. They are referred to collectively as foci. Notice that the shape defined by the string connected to the two pins and the pen is a triangle. As the pen moves around the ellipse, the string continues to make different triangles. However, each of these triangles has something in common. The length of the string. Although these triangles have different shapes, the total length or perimeter of the sides is the same. This demonstrates how, mathematically, an ellipse can be described as connected points at one of the corners of a continuous series of triangles with a constant perimeter such that two corners are fixed at the foci. A man known as Johann Kepler, widely regarded as the grandfather of the scientific method, discovered the relationship between orbits and ellipses when he was trying to figure out the strange observations of how planets moved in the night sky. Johann's discoveries are called the Laws of Planetary Motion. Kepler's first law of planetary motion, called the Law of Ellipses, is this. The orbit of every planet is an ellipse with the Sun at one of the two foci. Okay, planets move in ellipses. How does that help me reach an orbit? To answer that, we need someone who discovered the connection between orbiting planets and other objects in space, like rockets. We come to Sir Isaac Newton, author of the Theory of Gravity. Newton theorized that if someone climbed up a sufficiently tall mountain and placed on top a sufficiently powerful cannon, any projectile fired from this cannon would completely orbit the Earth and return to its origin. When Newton examined the mathematical description of how cannonballs orbit the Earth, he came to the same conclusion that Kepler did. The shape defined was an ellipse. As Kepler and Newton discovered, the Earth moves around the Sun in an ellipse. The Moon moves in an ellipse with respect to Earth, and an orbiting cannonball moves in an ellipse. Newton called the force that caused objects to behave this way, gravity. A rocket launching into orbit is very similar to Newton's hypothetical cannon. The first phase is where the rocket climbs to a high enough altitude, similar to someone pushing a cannon up a very tall mountain. Once the rocket is high enough, it turns over on its side to add lateral velocity, similar to a cannonball being fired from a cannon. Given enough thrust, the rocket is able to reach an orbit. However, not all orbits are stable. Many will cause the rocket to fall back down or get lost in space. There are two characteristic points, or nodes, in an orbit that determine if the orbit is stable or not. The periapsis is the point along the orbit that is closest to the orbit's center of mass. The apoapsis is the point along the orbit that is furthest from the orbit's center of mass. The periapsis and apoapsis are sufficient to define the shape of any stable orbit. A stable orbit is an orbit with a periapsis above the atmosphere or surface. For Kerbin, that's 70 kilometers or higher. Also, stable orbits have an apoapsis close enough so that the center of mass still maintains its gravitational pull. The region of space around a center of mass with the largest gravitational pull is referred to as the sphere of influence, or SOI. For Kerbin, 
that's about 85,000 kilometers or lower. Armed with this information, here is a tutorial to apply this knowledge to reach orbit. Launch your rocket so that it remains vertical until you reach about 12,000 meters. Enabling SAS with the T key should help with controlling the rocket. At about 12,000 meters, turn the rocket over to about 45 degrees above the horizon. In the map view, watch the apoapsis height by hovering your mouse over the AP flag. Once it reaches 75,000 meters or higher, cut your engines. Now your rocket has enough momentum to coast to the apoapsis. Think of this as coasting to the top of Newton's hypothetical mountain. When you are about 60 seconds away, turn your rocket until the heading is centered on the prograde marker. At T minus 30 seconds, apply full thrust. This is similar to Newton's hypothetical cannon shooting a cannonball. Given enough energy, the rocket will reach a stable orbit. Zoom out and watch as the velocity increases, raising the periapsis. Once the periapsis also reaches 75,000 meters or higher, cut your engines with the X key. Congratulations, you have reached a stable orbit. In this video, we examined Kepler's first law of planetary motion. The orbit of every planet is an ellipse with the Sun at one of the two foci. The terms we defined to help describe an orbit, the periapsis, which is the point closest to the center of mass, and the apoapsis, which is the point farthest away from the center of mass. We examined how Newton concluded that Kepler's first law applies to all orbiting objects, and learned how Newton theorized that any object fired from a powerful enough cannon would reach an orbit. Lastly, we used Newton's cannon analogy to demonstrate how a rocket is able to reach a stable orbit. That concludes Corbital Mechanics Lesson 1. Next time, we review Corbital Mechanics Lesson 2, Kepler's second law of planetary motion, called the Law of Equal Areas. Until then, see you next time.